Hey, what's going on everyone? This review is going to cover both the AEUG and the Titans version of this suit, since they're just color swaps of each other. Of course, anytime a difference pops up, I'll make sure to point it out for you. Now, I'll be reviewing these Master Grade Gundams in four categories. The build, the appearance, the articulation, and the gimmicks. I'll give each a score from 1 to 5, and at the end I'll tally everything up for an average score. Hopefully this review will help you decide if these kits are right for you. Part 1, the build. This kit was made in late 2005, so it's right when Master Grade started to get good. It has a really simple manual, great part separation, no screws, no need for glue, and no seriously bad nub. On top of that, there are no stickers outside of the eyes and the cameras, and excluding the head, it's got a full inner frame. Speaking of the inner frame, this may be my favorite era of inner frames. The frames from the mid to late 2000s were made for showing off. There's tons of details just screaming to be painted in gun metal, silver, red, and gold. It's even got actual braided pipes on the back of the legs and the backpack, as well as silver plated pistons in the ankles. Compare this to modern inner frames which are more about function and seem to lack any of these little frills. Having said that, the actual engineering of this inner frame only really shines in the legs. The builds for the waist, chest, arms, and head are pretty boring in terms of construction. The head itself is only like three pieces, sandwiched between two armor pieces, leading to a bad seam line on the side. Anyway, the difficulty of this kit is about average for a Master Grade. It's nowhere near as complicated as a version Katoki kit, but it might be a little too much for a first time build with all the braided pipes and the inner frame and the legs. Now, let's dig into some of the technical stuff, mainly the painting. There's only really one place where I'd say painting is a must, and that's the red on the side skirts. You can just get a red Gundam marker, fill it in, and then use some sandpaper to sand off the top of the piece to clean it up. Other than that, there's a ton of optional touch-ups. I personally think one of the best touch-ups is filling in the yellow vents with black paint. The vents either have panel lines or gray inner frame showing, but you know how much I care about anime accuracy, so I just went with solid black instead. Aside from the vents, some green on the chest cameras is a nice touch-up too. You should also probably add this gray onto the ankle armor. And lastly, you can add silver to some of the exposed inner frame. The build for this kit is great, especially for 2005. But the engineering from the waist up is pretty boring, especially the head. So I'll give the build for this kit a 4 out of 5. Part 2, the appearance. This is exactly how I want my Mark IIs to look. A Mark II should be bulky, and these 2.0s are just that. This version of the Mark II Gundam also has just the right amount of panel lines. They've got all the tick marks they had in the anime and nothing more. Just how I like it. The colors are also fantastic. The AEUG version is a nice gray, and the red, yellow, and black are all spot on. The Titans version is also the perfect shade of navy blue. As far as decals go, it's the usual dry transfer model numbers and peel and stick caution signs. Of course, you get a different set of model numbers for each of the versions of this kit one focusing on the AEUG and the other on the Titans. The Titans version specifically comes with the model numbers for three separate units, just like in the anime. I went with Unit 3 because that's the one Camille stole and ultimately became the unit used throughout Zeta Gundam. Well, that about does it for the appearance. There's not much to really say here, it's everything I could have asked for. I'll give the appearance of these kits a perfect score of 5 out of 5. Part 3, the articulation. Starting with the feet, both the toes and the heels can move up and down. This is something even modern kits can't do. The ankle has a ball joint on the bottom and a hinge on the top, so you get all the mobility you need. This armor piece also moves too. You get a 135 degree bend out of the knee. When you bend it, all these armor pieces move with it. It's a thing of beauty. Anyways, the hips use the modified ball and socket, which means it's just the old style hip mount with just the polycap thrown in. It does its job, but over time the polycap tends to loosen up. I've had these kits for 2 or 3 years at this point, and the hip joints haven't really stayed that tight. I mean, the legs will stay on no problem, but if you get these aerial, the legs will more than likely just droop down over time. Moving on up, the waist skirts move just as you would expect. The back skirt is locked in place though. The chest can spin at the waist and move a little forward and backward. The shoulder joint can move upwards and a little forwards and backwards thanks to a combination of hinges and the chest. The joint itself is a poly cap slipped onto a peg, so it can spin around pretty well. The upper arm spins 360 degrees with a stable connection. You get a solid 180 out of the elbow. It's really only limited by the shoulder armor. 
The wrists are the standard ball joints, and the hands have the old style trigger finger split with a ball joint thumb. Thankfully it has pegs though. The head is on a double ball joint. It gets the job done, but it's kinda loose. Finally, the backpack has movable beam saber holders and thrusters. Okay, that about sums up the articulation. It's really impressive for its time, with all the moving armor pieces in the legs. But over time, the limbs on this guy have gotten a little loose. Polycaps really don't age too well, especially on important, weight-bearing joints like the hips and the shoulder. I'll give the articulation of these kits a 4 out of 5. Part 4, the gimmicks. These kits come with everything you could ask for from a Mark II. The gun is what you would expect, but there's some nice color separation and the scopes can fold down. These kits can also support the gun no problem thanks to a peg in the hands. You get three ammo packs. I usually keep the extra two on the inside of the shield. The bazooka is great as well. Just like the gun, it has good color separation. The bazooka is also just the right length, so the Gundam can actually hold it. Of course, I always prefer to keep the bazooka on the back of the waist. Just like the gun, you get an extra ammo pack as well. I normally attach it to the side skirt. The shield looks fantastic even with the yellow stickers on the AEUG version. I really like how you can actually slide the bottom part up as well. The whole shield plugs firmly into the forearm thanks to this connector piece. You can also spin the shield around thanks to this piece. The beam sabers are pretty standard. Nothing really to see here. Rounding out the Mark II's arsenal, you get the Vulcan Pod, which is this little headset thing. Apparently the Mark II doesn't have built-in head Vulcans, so he uses this instead. It just snaps into these indents on the side of the head, and you're good to go. It doesn't hamper the movement of the head whatsoever, so I usually keep it on. Also, this red piece on the side is an actual molded part. There is one major difference in the gimmicks between the AEUG version and the Titans version. The AEUG version comes with a dedicated stamp. It's this black square made to look like a hangar bay. It even has a little arm and a small crew member you can have floating next to the Gundam. You can connect this stand to the stand for the Zeta Gundam 2.0 as well, and form like a little diorama. But unlike the Zeta Gundam 2.0's stand, this stand is actually pointless. Believe it or not, this stand isn't actually a stand for aerial poses. Yeah, it's just a nice looking display base. Regardless, it's exclusive to the AEUG version. The Titans version doesn't come with this. Okay, that's all the gimmicks for these kits. These kits come with everything a Mark II needs. Just know that if you're into dioramas, you're probably going to want the AEUG version. I'll give a gimmicks for these kits a solid 5 out of 5. Okay, time to wrap everything up for a final verdict. The build was a 4 out of 5. It has an inner frame screaming to be painted. Unfortunately, the engineering from the waist up is sort of bland. The appearance was a perfect 5 out of 5. These kits have great proportions, all the right panel lines, and spot on colors. The articulation was a 4 out of 5. It has above average articulation, but the use of polycaps and key joints is a negative in the long run. Lastly, the gimmicks receive a 5 out of 5. There's nothing else I could really ask for. Thanks to the pegs in the hands, these kits can actually make use of all their weapons too. Just remember that if you're into dioramas, you may want to get the AEUG version to get that nice display stand. Tallying all that up and dividing, you get an average score of 4.5 out of 5, or a 90%. That's exactly what I think these kits should get. They're great model kits and definitely my favorite version of the Mark II. These kits are over a decade old, and they still compare to modern kits. I actually use these kits to mark, in my opinion, what is the second era of Master Grades. These kits sort of form a line for me, where everything before them is sort of iffy, but everything afterwards is going to at least have more positives than negatives. This is a kit that I think everyone collecting Master Grade Gundams should have. There's no point in waiting for a 3.0 of this guy. These 2.0s are getting the job done just fine. Okay, that's my review of the Master Grade RX-178 Gundam Mark II. Feel free to leave a comment on what kit you want to see reviewed next, and I'm more than happy to help out. Thanks for watching.